Hi everyone. Okay, so I'm extremely excited to be here and I'm extremely excited to make this video. I am going to be talking about what it's like to be a second wave volunteer. For those of you who are unaware of what that means or who Dolores Cannon even is, she was a pioneer, okay, a pioneer in uh, hypnosis for past life regression. Um, she was one of the first and she compiled about 40 years of research. This is how long she's been doing it. And her work is based in research into metaphysics and discoveries of the unknown. But she did also compile her research through hypnosis, being a hypnosis um, therapist um, and taking people into their past lives and doing it for so long, she just started to like gather information. Now she has a lot of books that she's written you can easily find uh, her here on YouTube. I will link um, the video uh, in regards to the, the volunteers uh, on Earth just so that you can get also a better idea of even what I'm talking about if you really are unaware at this point of clicking on the video. Um, but today I'm going to talk about what it's like to be here as a second wave volunteer. When I first heard her speak about this, I swear it was like something hit me with like a ton of bricks because everything made sense. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to walk you through that today of what it was like for me. And I am going to mainly start from like the beginning, like when I was born, cause that's just the way I want to do this. And I am hoping that with this video, um, it can maybe help you. Maybe there are things that are a mystery to you. Maybe there are things about your own life that you don't understand or why you mainly felt like you just never fit in here. And when I say here, I mean on earth. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. So let's get started. Okay, so let's first talk about why earth needed volunteers. So at this very moment, uh, earth is experiencing a shift. I'm sure you guys can feel it. You can see it within your own life, but we are moving into our next reincarnation. And we have, um, in a way, <clears throat> damaged Earth, um, the darkness that has come, you know, uh, to this planet uh, for its own purposes, uh, has tampered with it so much that it just can't go any further. So right now, Earth is going through a transition. And, you know, this was already predetermined or decided that it would experience this shift, but it did need volunteers. Now, why the volunteers come? Uh, because those volunteers are usually from other galaxies or other planets and they carry a higher, higher frequency, a higher vibration. And so just by being here um, and, and carrying those vibrations and those frequencies, you help illuminate the earth, uh, earth is frequency vibration, as well as awaken others. Now we are headed towards the new earth. Um, this is basically where we've come from but somehow have lost our way and we are trying to actively get back to that so uh the new earth is definitely um what we would call or coin the term uh fifth dimension and in dolores cannon's own words this is the greatest show um that has ever been seen in the galaxy and everyone is watching uh, watching from other galaxies, other star systems to see if we are going to pull it off. And I can say that I feel very confident with that, uh, just the way that the world is moving, the shift that is happening. You have more people like who are leaving the system, this uh, smaller box that, you know, was, uh, you know, sold to us of what we should be like, what should we should be doing. And I do see a lot more and more people leaving, um, deciding that they want to take their own path. Okay, so now I'm going to dive into my experience with being here on Earth as a second waiver. And hopefully uh, you can get through me sharing my experiences, some insight into your own life. Uh, let me know in the comment section if any of this, you know, makes sense to you. If you've experienced anything that I've experienced, um, you could also help others to know that they're not alone. So yeah, let's dive in. So I'm going to, like I said in the beginning, start from like, you know, the, the first earlier days of my life. Um, I came into the world um, and, you know, it's interesting because I find 
when you kind of reincarnate here um, as a second waiver, you could have some complications in the beginning uh, because again, like you just, your body is, you, it's a body, right? You're not used to that. And a lot of the times the volunteers, they have higher frequencies, um, higher, you know, they carry higher frequencies. So coming into the physical body can also be very difficult. So I noticed like, with a lot of other people that I, you know, researched talking about being a second wave, they had a lot of issues when they were born, just with like illnesses or sicknesses. When I did come into this world, <clears throat> I was uh, sick. I was in and out of like hospitals. Um, and I'm talking about all under the age of six months. There was even one time where I died like for, for a brief second. This is a story that I was told. Um, I think it was like two or three seconds. My heart stopped, but, um, after a bit, you know, of getting used to being in the physical body, I started to kind of get better. But this is just something I did want to mention in case it resonates with any of you is that in the earlier days, like when you are first born, you may have some issues with transitioning into the body. OK, the actual physical body, because it's your first time doing this. Um, now, I'm going to progress to about four or five years old. That's when I first started to feel like this place was weird. <laughs> um, I just, I don't know. Like, I just felt like everything was just not really my cup of tea. Like, I didn't really like school. Um, school, for example, just uh, the rules, the, I just, it was boring. Um, I also didn't really feel like I believed in the people who were, you know, teaching. Um, I never resonated with it. I was actually always that one to kind of come out of nowhere with like a different opinion or a different thought. But I just remember school and that stayed with me actually till the end, um, just never resonating with me. I just felt like it, there was, it just felt like I was in a jail cell and I just didn't understand why I couldn't be more creative. Why did I have to be uh, like fall in line, be a part of a group uh, or be so much more uh, robotic than creative. That was one thing that stuck with me. Now, the other thing I should have probably mentioned before the school was that um, as a second wave, I just remember not really understanding like the family I was born into. Um, <clears throat> you see, as a second wave, you've just, you've got so much knowledge and wisdom. And I still get compliments up to this day that like you're so young and the fact that you have all this wisdom, like where does it come from? Um, I get this, I've had this like constantly uh, throughout you know, my years being told to me, but I remember being as young as like five and six and just looking around at like the people who are supposed to be family and just kind of scratching my head as to kind of like why they couldn't get it together. Um, I also really did find it hard to have a connection with them it was always like a force to feel love or, and it was the other, on the other end as well too, um, just to even put the effort into like forming a love or a bond around the connection or the relationship, it always felt forceful. So I just, I never felt connected, but I also used to remember like, and I, I think I have an idea as to why this happens is because, you know, Maybe those people who are in uh, your family may be stuck in karmic cycles, whereas this is your first reincarnation. So when you get around them, you can kind of pick up on that. And that's why usually their life is a mess um, or you kind of under, don't understand why they can't get it together. Um, the answers always seem so easy to you, yet they always are making everything so difficult. So family was a big one for me. I just never resonated with them. And I felt like it was always extremely hard to feel love or form love with them. So other things you start to notice as you start to get older as being part of uh, the second wave is you've got a special set of skills that others don't. It's almost like you don't even have to work towards them. You've got uh, a great intuition. Um, I find for me, I never had to work on my intuition. My intuition was speaking to me from as young as five and six years old. And it's a lot of the times why I didn't get into a uh, you know, bad situation is because that intuition was quite heightened, um, as well as the psychic intuition. So 
you know, it goes hand in hand. Um, if you feel like you are a part of the second wave, you will have intuition and psychic abilities. Those will be very strong from the get go. Um, yes, you may have to work on them or tweak them a bit, but you will really have a good hold of that. Um, now the other thing, because you have that intuition and you have that psychic ability, you will start to realize, and it usually I found for me, it happened around my teens. I started to get this like little voice, like an energy, um, because you know, when you're a second waiver, you've got a big team around you. Not only that, you have a star family that I'll get into at the end. Um, that's why I said, stick around. It's going to get more exciting. Um, but you'll start to get this like idea and this knowing that you are here for something bigger. Uh, you're not here to follow the same path that, you know, maybe even your parents wanted for you or, uh, you know, again, what everybody else is doing while everybody else is going off to college and university, you are just usually lost because as a second wave, um, even if you're a part of any of the waves, uh, because there are three, you're not going to fit in um, really with the system, okay? So if you are at a point right now where you're quite young watching this, maybe you're in your early 20s, don't be so hard on yourself. You're not meant to fit in. You're meant to stand out, okay? Uh, but you start to notice you got this mission. It starts to come like little by little, and it will always stay with you and follow you. And it's like, you know, you're different. You should be doing something different. So as this intuition follows you, you start to realize another thing. And Dolores can does talk about the second waivers as generators. They're here to channel energy and be a beacon of light. Uh, this is one of the strongest indicators, you know, uh, that you may be one. She mentions that, you know, they can walk through a mall and they can affect everybody they encounter. That is something I always never understood. I used to always ask people like, do I look weird? Is something wrong with me? Um, is there something on my face? Uh, you may resonate with that. Some people may be here and literally have asked these questions because they just don't understand why everyone's looking at them. And no, it's not about, you know, beauty. Okay. It's not about that. Um, there have been many times where I have not been, um, you know, camera ready and I have affected people the same way. So this is how this was happening to me in gyms. This was happening to me in malls, pretty much everywhere I went. And, you know, um, thank goodness I found this piece of information because I would probably still wonder at this point as to why this happens, but I'm going to let you know that this is a forever thing. Okay. So even if you, uh, get more confident with yourself or you start to understand what your mission is. This is just something that goes and ties into with what you are here to do. You are here to affect everybody you encounter and that could be even on camera. That's how strong it is. Okay. It could just even be your voice. Um, but you are here to like channel energy and affect everyone you meet because again, it ties into the mission. Now, uh, the other thing I want to mention is because of this mission, uh, you will have a lot of situations where the darkness that roams the earth will also chase you, okay? So I feel like with second waivers, they've probably encountered a lot of dangerous uh, situations, whether that be uh, like people who have wanted to kind of control them or, you know, use their energy or psychic attacks. Uh, you know, many near death experiences uh, have been uh, felt by second waivers. I can't tell you how many times I was in situations where I could have lost my life because remember, uh, to the darkness, you're here with a mission and it, to raise that frequency of earth would mean that everybody would be turning away from the darkness. They would be going more towards the light. So you better believe it when I say that uh, you will be targeted in some sense, okay, by the darkness. Now, that's not to be, uh, you don't need to be afraid of that. Um, it is what it is. Um, there are things that you can do to protect yourself. Um, and I do find that, um, you know, it, it will come in various forms. Um, but one thing with the second waivers is that as they come more and more into themselves, they start to get more and more aware so they can see things even 
uh, from far away, you know, whereas before when I was younger, I would give people more chances. Now I can sense who, who people are and who they're not and who I don't want to be around, okay? So you will be protected at the same time. So there's no need to worry, okay? Crowds, oh my goodness. Uh, as a generator, uh, the crowds are a big no-no. Um, every time I go to a crowd, a crowded place, um, I come home with ailments, either migraines or nausea. Uh, because we are, again, a channeler of energy, I often need like isolation, okay? So if you're a second waiver, you may, uh, you know, resonate with the fact that you may have to be alone a lot. I don't have a lot of energy. Um, it's just, it's when I do exude it, I definitely need to recharge, okay? It's just something that goes hand in hand. Um, the other thing, you are always gonna be being, you are always gonna feel like you have to evolve. You're gonna be pushed to. You are on a spiritual path uh, while being here you're not here to follow uh you're here to follow the, the road less traveled so you always feel like this energy again coming from behind that to evolve uh raise your frequency uh do mission work help others you are here to do that now i know dolores can does say that we are here to do nothing we just want to be and i can't tell you how much i resonate with that because i always say this, I don't want to do anything. I just want to be. If I could go live up north um, in the middle of the woods, surrounded by trees, I would do that, okay? Um, and that is something I am moving towards. Uh, so, you know, I'm excited for that. But uh, we definitely need our downtime. Now, the other thing um, that you will resonate or you may resonate with by being a second raver is that we will encounter our uh, twin flame, okay? Um, not only that, um, we will also even meet people who have pieces of us inside them, okay? So what do I mean by that? Like soul group where our soul, pieces of our particular soul are in them. But for the main one, I don't want to get too deep into this. Uh, you will have met your, your your twin flame. You will have meet you will you will meet them, um, or you will have met them, and um, it will be one of the biggest uh, things you ever experience in your life. From what I've gathered, from again what I've received from uh, source and God, is that it is there to really activate you, to act as. Um, you know, an extra added uh, bonus type, if you want to call it, um, you know, tool to kind of fast track you. Uh, because again, you're here for that mission. Remember what I said? So that's just something I've noticed. I did feel like my whole life changed when I met this person and it changed rapidly. Okay. Now, the last thing um, you will notice or resonate with this video Um it should be resonating with you at this point because we are at the end. Um, I'm sure there is a lot more to discuss, but I don't want to make this a super long video. But you will have been introduced to your star family, okay? This is something that just has recently happened to me. Now, I do have, you know, it is hard for us as second wave generators to be here. It's extremely difficult. Uh, all we do is feel like we just want to go home because, you know, I don't want to act like earth is not a beautiful place, but for second waivers, it, it can be very boring. You know, I always say, I feel like I come from a place where there's a lot more, you know, magic happening, um, a lot more, you know, more happening period. And when I am here, um, it does get very boring for me. So I do suffer sometimes with being here. I also don't really resonate with uh, majority of other, you know, humans that are here, I feel like, again, it's always that thing that's poking out to me. Like, I don't know why it's taking so long to get it together <laughs> or like just have common sense, stuff like that. Or, you know, we don't really like hassles as well either, uh, as a part of, as being a part of a second waiver, we're used to something different. I find with earth, it's like the trenches. So you're just always constantly dealing with something and you just want it to make sense, but it doesn't. So I did have uh, recently, a couple of months ago, I was having a hard time with being here and I did receive um, interaction through Dream State from my star family. And I will tell you, uh, 
they did come to let me know that I was doing a great job, but when I did meet them, everything felt um, a lot more connected. Everything made sense to me uh, when I did meet them, um, as opposed to what I've ever felt here. So Star Family will show up. Uh, they will probably introduce themselves to you at some point through whether it's dream state or meditation, but that's also something um, that you know you will notice as a second waiver now the other things i've noticed or you know heard um the common running theme i'm not sure i'm completely sold on this yet is that um you know you'll have green eyes i do by the way have green eyes but i just i'm not entirely sure if that you know is a thing um maybe it is i'm not sure but kind of coincidental i actually have them so it is a smaller part of the population i think we're sitting at about one percent uh, of people who have this color eyes, but they have made, uh, people have made comparisons with second waivers and having green eyes. So I did want to throw that out as well, just in case it is in fact factual and I just don't know it yet. But um, this is where I'm going to wrap it up. I will say that, you know, um, I am in a lot better place than I am now, but I feel like growing up as a second waiver is just extremely confusing. But I do want you to know, and I do want to say from one second waiver to another, you will find your way. Your guides, you've got a huge team around you. They're not going to like not let you find your way. You will find your way. And when you find your purpose here, it just makes things a lot more easier. But stay strong. Keep listening to that intuition of yours. And uh, just continue. Continue doing what you're doing. You know, people may not like you. Uh, people may, may like you, may not like you. Um, but that's okay. You know, um, it's all love at the end of the day. And you will be rewarded for this. It is a very rewarding, um, I feel like, challenge. Um, but I wouldn't trade this for the for anything. Um, I'm actually quite happy to be a part of, you know, a, a, a volunteer, uh, you know, the volunteers to uh, elevate Earth because I care a lot about Earth and uh, I want to see it move in the right way. So take care, guys. Namaste.